Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to lesson 3, module 1.2 in our series on Islamic inheritance. So in the last lesson, we began discussing the Ashab al or the Wil Furud, and we went through the conditions of the Ab, the father. After that, we did some practice questions. And after that, the, you are also given some after lesson questions to take a go. So if you haven't tried those after lesson questions yet, you can stop right here, inshallah, and go back and give those questions a go, inshallah. In today's lesson, we'll be going over the Wil Furud number two. The Wil Furud number two, okay, which is the Jad. And I've written brackets here Jad Sahih. Jad Sahih. Jad translates in English as grandfather. Jad Sahih means the father's father. And we'll discuss this in greater detail later on, inshallah. The conditions of the Jad are very similar to the conditions of the Ab, especially the first, second, and third conditions. And obviously, the Ab never had a fourth condition. But in conditions number one, two, and three, it's almost identical, except that there's an extra clause added in. So, if you refer back to the table in Ab, condition number one read when the Ibn, Ibn al Ibn, etc., is present. Over here, we've got the same thing, copy-paste, but we've added an extra clause in which says, and the ab is not present. Then the, then the jad would receive one six. And again, uh, like it was mentioned in the previous lesson, the table of Azul's fixtures ideally needs to be learned off by heart. So uh, the student should be able to say, a jad, the, the jad has a total of four conditions. Condition number one, he will receive one six. When the Ibn, Ibn al-Ibn, etc. is present and the Ab is not present, condition number two, and so on and so forth, the student should be able to say the entire table off by heart. And if you don't have the table, then you can go back to the lesson on Ab and you can find the table in the description box there, inshallah, which you can print out also. So condition number one, when the Ibn, Ibn al-Ibn, etc. is present and the Ab is not present, condition number two, exactly the same as it was in Ab, except that this time we've added, and the Ab is not present, Condition number three in Ab said when the Ibn and Bint are not present. Over here, we're adding on the extra clause of the Ab also not being present. So the Ibn, Ibn al Ibn, and so on and so forth. Bint, Bint al Ibn, so on and so forth. And Ab are not present. And condition number four, which is the extra condition in Jad, reads that when the Ab is present, when the father is from the Ab is present, then the Jad will be Mahjub. Hence, we've written a meme here. Meme for Mahjub. Mahjub basically means he'll get nothing. Mahjub basically means he'll get nothing. Okay, so we'll go over all of these conditions one by one, like we did for the Ab also. We'll have some practice questions, and inshallah, there'll also be some after lesson questions. Mahjub comes from uh, Hajaba, uh, which means to veil. Um, and in this in this situation, in in specific with specific regards to Islamic mirath, what it means is because the ab here is present when the ab is present because the ab is present, therefore the jad has received nothing. So when when one the will furud being present leads to another one not receiving anything, we say that the second of the the will furud who has not received anything has become mahjub, has been deprived. Okay. <sighs> Jad Sahih and Jad Fasid. Okay. So right now we're discussing Jad. There's two types of Jad. If we have an individual here, let's say we have Muhammad. Okay. Muhammad has a father. Muhammad has a mother. Okay. Then Muhammad's father has a father. And the father has a mother. And on this side, the mother also has obviously a father and a mother. So we have two potential grandfathers here and here. The father's father is called Jad Sahih. 
and the mother's father is called Jad Fasid. Okay, so when we say that the Jad inherits the wealth, we mean the father's father and not the mother's father. So it's only this one here uh, is part of the the will or ashab al furud. This one here is not part of the the will or ashab al furud. Okay, condition number one. Condition number one read when the ibn ibn al ibn etc is present. The father and the father is not there's supposed to be a space here, and the father is not present, then the judge will receive one sixth of the inheritance. Over here we have an example Zoja ibn Akh Jad. Okay, so for now we can ignore this. We can we can ignore this, we can ignore this. We will say that the ibn is present. Therefore, the Jad will receive one sixth. And what does the Ibn get? We haven't discussed that yet, so just leave it empty, inshallah. What we have discussed so far is that the Ibn is present and the father is not present. Can you see the Ab anywhere? No, we can't see the Ab anywhere here. So the Ibn is present and the Ab is not present. Therefore, the Jad will receive one sixth. Another example for condition number one, again, I've just written the condition here again. When the Ibn, 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 etc. is present and the father is not present. So we have another example here. We have the Ibn, Ibn, Ibn is present. There's no Ab anywhere, so the father is not present. Then the Jad will receive one sixth. Jad condition number two, okay, and ideally I think I should have used ab here rather than father. So I'm just going to correct that now, inshallah. Even in all the other ones, um, inshallah, I'll be saying ab rather than father as we discuss. We'll stick to the Arabic terminology, inshallah. Okay, so condition number two, when the bint bintul ibn is present and the ab is not present. So the example given here is zawj, bint, and jad. So we can see that the bint is present. The ab is not present. So the jad will receive one six plus asaba. Okay, so again, the bint is present. So there's two things you need to look out for over here. One, the bint or bintul ibn being present. And number two, the father not being present. So we can see that the bint is present, the father is not present. Jad will receive one six plus asaba. Again, <clears throat> condition number two, same conditions written here. When the bint, bintul ibn is present and the ab is not present, we can see here that we have the zawj, ibn, bint, and jad. So the reason I've included this example is because we have both the ibn and the jad. So over here, will we say, that the bint is present, therefore the jad will receive one sixth of asaba, or will we say that the ibn is present, therefore the jad will only receive one sixth? In this situation, we will say we will give preference to the ibn to condition number one, and we will say because the ibn is present, the jad only receives one sixth. So just to be of a clarification here on condition number two, and lastly, condition number three, when the ibn Bint are not present and the father is not present and the ab is not present. So all three are not present. Over here we can see Zawj Akhjad. Is the ibn anywhere? No. Bint anywhere? No. Ab anywhere? No. Therefore the jad receives asaba. Okay. As always, the best way to wrap our head around this is to um, give a shot as many practice questions as we can, inshallah. So, uh, so far we've covered the ab and we've covered the jad also. So, anywhere you see ab, you should be able to answer the question and you should be able to assign the ab with the share that he should be getting. And anywhere you see jad, you should be able to assign what the jad should be getting also. So, again, I'll bring up the question. You can pause the screen, get a pen and paper, write the question out, assign the shares. And then play the video again and uh, go through the answers, inshallah. <clears throat>
So over here, we'll start off with Jad, which is today's lesson. So we'll say according to condition number four, which is when the Ab is present, the Jad is Mahroom or Mahjub. The Jad is Mahjub. Okay. However, we've also covered Ab, so we will say in Ab according to condition number two, the Bintul Ibn is present, so the Ab receives one six plus Asaba. Take a go at this question, inshallah. Okay. In this question, again, we will say because the Ab is present, the Jad is Mahjub. The Ab, according to condition number one, will receive one six. So you can slowly see that we're moving further with our questions. We're not only answering one the will furud, we're answering two for, two the will furud. Okay, next question, inshallah. In this question, we will say that according to condition number one, the Ibn al Ibn is present. So the Jadri will receive one six. Next question. Okay. In this question, you can see that we haven't included the Jad anywhere. However, we have done the Ab, so we should be able to answer that the Ab receives 1 6 plus Asaba according to condition number 2 because the Bint is present. Okay, in this question, the Jad receives one six because the Ibn al Ibn is present. Again, we have condition one here and we have condition two here. So when they both clash, we'll just ignore this and take condition number one. Okay, in this question, again, there's no Jad, so you don't need to answer the Jad, obviously. But we can see that the Ab is present. Over here, there's no Ibn, there's no Bint. Therefore, the Ab will receive Asaba. And that brings us to the end of our questions. Uh, like always, consolidate your learning. Have a, have a go at our after lesson questions. Find the link in the description below. So the more we practice, the better we're going to get, inshallah. So don't underestimate the power of practicing. And give all the questions a go, inshallah. And if you get it wrong, you can check the answers as well. Jazakumullah.